You guys have been waiting a year. I think it's finally time to paint the first... Warlord Titan! And actually, while I'm painting this one, Lucas is working on this bad boy, the Chaos Titan. But we won't show that until next week. I guess you have to subscribe so you get to see the next video. And this is a massive piece. And it's gonna take a lot of time to paint. So to make my life easier, we want to make sure that it doesn't take more time than necessary. And for that, we need a good process. We want to make sure that we do all of the messy steps in the beginning of the painting process so that we don't have to be careful and take extra time to make sure that it doesn't leak to any of the other areas. Meaning, all of the airbrush work and stippling. I'm starting off by base coating the entire thing in the main colors that I'm going to use. In this case, it's dark sea blue. I'm then going to highlight the entire thing in two different steps. Firstly with soda green, and then Vallejo Blue-Green. And with each step that I highlight, I make sure that I add it to a slightly smaller surface. And with half an hour on the airbrush, we get a good start to work our way up. <laughs> I'm going to use the simplest tool in my arsenal of painting for the next painting step. And that is... It's, it's just a it's sponge foam. It's not a gun. I'm adding the same colors that we used through the airbrush on the wet palette, as well as some white. I'm just gonna slightly moisten the sponge by adding some water into it and then removing the majority of it. And then start stippling with the sponge on all of the panels. On the areas where it's supposed to be mostly bright, I'm adding more blue-green. And while that is still wet, I'm mixing in some Sodic Green, blending the two colors together, creating textures from the highlight to the mid-tones. On some of the panels, I needed to stipple in some dark sea blue, but on most of them, it wasn't necessary. Or if it's a cylindrical shape, we make sure that it's in the center of the cylinder, angled towards the viewer. I do want to punch it a little bit more and add more texture to it. So I'm gonna mix some of the white into the blue-green and start highlighting on an even smaller surface at the center of each of these highlights, making sure that we go brighter and brighter, creating a smooth transition of textures. And with that, we have a perfect textured base for all of the panels. We're now just going to blend everything together even more to create smoother transitions and to naturally add more shadows where we need there to be more shadows. Using one of my all-time favorite paints, the P3 Turquoise Ink. Inks are kind of like color filters. They're translucent, but they also make things a little bit darker where you add them. So in all of the areas that are angled downwards, we're spraying it from below to make the shadows even stronger. I'm also using it as a filter on all of the areas going from the shadows to the highlights, skipping the very finest of the highlights where we have the most white, making all of the blends super smooth while still keeping all of those stippled textures. So guys, we're almost done with all of the messy steps. We have one more thing to do. Because the Legion and South also have white grayish colors on their panels, we need to add that as well. Also to make it fit together with the test panels that we did on the head. Painting these in three different steps. Starting off with a regular masking tape, getting a few straight lines where I want there to be gray lines going across the blue panel areas. 
The second one is covering these areas with rock art flesh. Some of the areas I'm just covering with a regular paintbrush, but on all of the bigger areas I'm using an airbrush to save myself some time. The third step is mixing rocket flesh with some white on the wet palette. Going all the way up to white, I'm creating these reflective patterns on all of the grey stripes. This done it's going to look a little bit disconnected from all of the turquoise stuff and that is fine we're going to blend it together in this next step again using the airbrush and ink you don't need these two specific inks just any black and kind of dark brownish ink is going to work just make sure that they're properly thinned down spring it again on all of the areas angled downwards getting some shadows in there as well as blending some of the brightest highlights together With that, boom! Looks awesome! I'm really hyped where it's going. Hello guys, I know. What is Lucas doing in this video? Well, Emil, he has a lot on his plate this week, so I thought I'd help him out, prime the entire mini with the gunmetal grey primer thingy wingy from Vallejo, and uh, that way he maybe actually finish this video in time for the release. Lucas, the only person in the world, can paint freaking two Warlord Titans at the same time. Yeah, so if you uh, subscribe and like this video, you'll maybe see the next one next week. Is it true? I think so. Is maybe. It? You have such a tiny head, I can hold you. Oh. <laughs> I'm now going to use one of my new favorite love-hate paints and that's Vallejo Glorious Gold from the new Model Color range. I love it because the sheen of it is just fantastic. The problem though is to get that beautiful sheen you need to add about three to four to five coats of thin down Glorious Gold to make it look really really good. But the look and sheen is just beautiful. I'm then using another one of the model color paints, Tinny Tin as our shade color. And the color is really easy to blend, so just add it to all of the areas that are either bent down or would be in shadow, almost creating a non-metallic metal with true metal colors. And because it's so thin, they blend together perfectly.
I'm gonna try to add a few graphic freehands to the piece and while I do I want to talk about this week's sponsor Into the AM. Into the AM have probably the coolest graphic t-shirts you can find on the internet. And if you follow our link down below, you get three shirts for 60 buckaroonies. Considering the quality, I think that's a bargain. But not only that, I've also fallen in love with their hoodies. They are the coziest that I have in my collection, as well as the full print shirts. They are just so sweet. And again, if you want an even better deal, you get 10% off if you follow the link down below. So just go down there, pick up some shirts for yourself and you're gonna end up looking a lot better than you already do because I know you're the prettiest in the world. So I was trying to make the graphic freehand and I gotta say that I've been humbled because I could not make it look as good as I want it to look, which might be good for you guys to see because we don't always succeed and I have not practiced illustrating much in my life. The freehand that we did a few weeks back I managed to do because I had 15 hours to do it. This graphic freehand, I don't know how to save it, so Lucas, who's got way more experience in painting and illustrating, is gonna try to save it. So hopefully it's gonna look amazing. Um, I have a gift for you, my friend! I will uh, give it my uh, worst try. There, Lucas, can you stop being so good at free hands? Yes. <laughs> that was so freaking lit. I love it. Yeah. So, all of the work on the panels are done! We obviously have some uh, small parts left. Like yeah. hundreds of hours. <laughs> yeah. The weapons, obviously, the insides, in between all of the panels need to be oil washed and stuff. But yeah, in one and a half weeks of work, I feel like we got a lot of stuff done. Yeah, and don't forget, during this one and a half week, I've been working on this title. So, uh... Subscribe! Yeah. But now, I guess it's time for Un Petit yeah, Revelation. Thanks into the AM for all these awesome t-shirts. And all these amazing Patreons. Patreons! And 